Hello everybody, it's Silverfish here again. One of the most common questions I've seen being asked recently to do with hexing has been about making your own external textures to use in your hex breed files. What I want to cover today in a two-part video is firstly how to make your own external textures and then how to put them into your breed files using Pet Workshop and also using Lines Pro. I do already have a written tutorial on making in uh, on converting your own textures to be compatible with the pets games and also on texture use in general on, on Shadow Finder, which is my tutorial website. If you prefer written tutorials to videos, then of course go and check that out. There's also a few programs and things that I'm going to be talking about today that you can find links to if you visit that website. I'll provide a link in the description as well so that it's easy for everybody. Let's get started then, first of all, with how to make your own external texture. The first thing you're going to need is some kind of image that you want to convert into a texture. That image can be really whatever you like. You can create it yourself using a graphics program of some kind, or you can find one of the many online generators that you can use to, to generate an image. What I would say is do keep in mind when you're making your image that it does need to tile. It doesn't have to tile, but if it doesn't tile, it won't look as good because you'll be able to see the edges of the image. I've got a folder here full of generated images, and I will link the generator in the description in case you want to have a play around because it's a lot of fun. A lot of these were generated by Timely, so I need to say a, a thank you to them for posting them on PetScored. I just saved them from there, and we'll work with some of these today. You can see I chose lots of very bright ones, but obviously you can do whatever you like. The first step in making an image uh, ready to use as a texture in, in pets is first of all to work out what the dimensions of the image are and to change it or resize it to be a compatible dimension. If you're working in pets three or four, it's a lot more forgiving and lenient on what the dimensions can be. But if you're in pets five, then you are limited to specific dimensions. So you're going to want your, your texture to be a square with dimensions eight by eight, or if you double that number up to 256, then those are also acceptable, so 8x8, 16x16, 32x32, 64x64, 128x128, 256x256. There are some other dimensions that also work, but I'm not going to go into those today. I think for most people, those square dimensions work fine, and they will also work in 3 and 4, so I would suggest that if you're going to make some custom textures for yourself, just stick to the dimensions that work for Pets 5. Okay, so I'm going to open up PaintShop Pro here. I'm very old school, so I use PaintShop Pro. Obviously, you don't need to. Most graphics programs will allow you to resize images. I'm going to find an image that I would like to use. Let's say this one here. And I'm going to resize it. I'm going to choose the dimension that happens to already be here, which is 128, because that will work in PETS 5 as well as 4. Resize it, and then I need to save it as a bitmap image. Let's call this, say, silverfish purple. And we want to save it as a bitmap image. Okay, we have our image now and it's been resized, it's a bitmap. The next thing we need to do is convert it to the pets palette. If you don't convert your image to the pets palette, as far as I'm aware, it will still work in your game. It's not going to cause a crash. If you have the wrong dimensions, it will cause a crash. But the wrong palette just means that it won't show up in game like it does when you look at it on your screen normally. 
it's such a simple step to also convert it that I think it's a good idea to just go ahead and do that. In order to convert to the pets palette, you're going to need two things. One thing is you're going to need a, a program that can do that for you. And the other thing you're going to need is the pets palette. I'm going to provide you with a link to where you can download the pets palette on my website. You'll download it in a zip file. You'll need to extract that from the zip file and just place it somewhere on your computer so that you can access it afterwards. And then I would suggest using Earth and View as your program to make to do the actual converting. So if I open up Earthm View now, this is Earthm View. I can just drag and drop this image into here. And then adding the pets palette is very simple. You go to image down to palettes here, import palette, navigate to wherever your palette is, select it, say open. And you will see that if it wasn't already in the pets palette, there's a small change in the coloring, which is what you just saw happen here. And that's just the image getting indexed to the pet palette. So how you see the image now is how it will in fact appear in game. It won't come to any surprise uh, as any surprise to any of you who are familiar with the pets palette. There aren't a lot of purples in it. So that very purple image got changed to different shades as a result of indexing it. All right, and then all we need to do is save this. I've just I'll just overwrite that one. Yes. Okay, and that's it. And that image is now ready to use as a texture in any of the pet games. In terms of how to actually use that, I'm going to just copy this from here. So if I open up my pets folder, then you should be able to find that you have a resource folder. Click that, you'll get into your resource section. And here it, you have a few different options for where you put your textures. One option is actually to create a separate folder. You can call it textures or something like that. And you can put your textures in there or what is more commonly done is that if you're going to be working with cats you go into your cats folder if you're going to be working with dogs you go into your dogs folders i'm going to go into cats and then you can simply paste the textures straight into your cats folder the same location as your breed files and you will make sure that your file paths to your textures go to here alternatively and that's what i'm going to do in this case you can create a separate folder like this one i've created a, a tutorial textures folder here and you can just paste your new texture into that folder. And when you write your file paths, you'll make sure they go to here. The game is pretty flexible about this, so it's really up to, up to you to decide. But just keep in mind that if you are adopting tech, uh, pets out to other people and they're using external textures, you're going to need to tell them where to put the textures. The most common place is simply in resource cats or, or resource dogs. But especially recently, I think there's been a tendency to try to organize a bit more because you can potentially have many, many textures, as you can see, because I am not organized and I just put all my textures in my cats folder and I don't really worry about it. I see it as this is my textures folder. And then I happen to also have some brief files in here. OK, and that's it. That It's really simple to make your own external textures. There's tools for generating images so anyone can do it and then all you need to know is how to actually put them in your breed files so the next thing i'm going to show you in the, which will be in the second video is how to actually use textures in pet workshop and in lines pro